There's a, a longer story behind it, but I'll try to shorten it. I'm not good at shortening stories, so I like to tell them. But uh, my mom had a stroke about eight years ago, and so it's been an interesting journey. Um, she is now uh, living full-time in a full-time skilled nursing care facility, and she was a nurse herself before before she had her stroke. So, so our life has been has been in and out of the hospital for different reasons. And now she's she lives in a nursing home, and um, it's uh, we've likened it to the to a head-on collision between comedy and tragedy. Um, and I think um, the tragedy is obvious, but the comedy part, um, I think, is the grace that we're given to handle the tragedy, which we otherwise wouldn't be able to handle. Um, so I think sometimes it's okay to laugh, especially when it hurts. Um, there are a few people, yeah, <laughs> and clap, too. It's good. There are a few people uh, at that facility that, that have become pretty special to me. Some are no longer with us, but um, I want to tell you about a few of them, and I'm going to sing you this song about them. And uh, the first one I want to tell you about, these are all residents. Uh, the first one I want to tell you about is a lady named Margie. And uh, she, she was a, a sweet lady, wasn't on too many medicines, she was just, she was just older and passing her time. Uh, but she really looked forward to Friday night when her son would bring her beer. <laughs> and uh, she'd get drunk on Friday night and everybody was fine with that. And uh, I mean, you know, it's all right. And then Saturday morning though, she, she would have a really bad hangover. She'd be really mean. She had a baby doll that she carried around with her on Saturday morning it became a weapon. <laughs> True. <laughs> there was Bob. Uh, Bob had a mantra. He had Alzheimer's and he would, he would chant this mantra. And one of his favorites actually was, How now brown cow? How now brown cow? How now brown cow? In a big, deep, bell bellowing voice. And you couldn't stop him, so you just joined him. And you walk onto the unit at any given time and find everybody, nurses, residents, all of them, chanting, How now brown cow? <laughs> Another thing he liked to say was, where the hell am I supposed to go now? And he would repeat that one too. That was my favorite. Um, there's a Miss Cleave. Miss Cleave is a one-woman black gospel choir confined to a chair. She must have sung her whole life in a, in a gospel choir because she's still singing. In her mind, she's still in that choir regardless of the fact that she's confined to her chair. And if she's not singing a hymn, she's singing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with her eyes closed all day. There's Raymond. Raymond was an architect. Raymond uh, had Alzheimer's as well. He liked to show you in the magazines the ads that he thought he designed. He had nervous hands. Uh, so they gave him what's called a busy apron. It has uh, zippers and Velcro and ties and buttons. And, well, he had that thing figured out in about five minutes flat. Uh, but Raymond liked to wear a commando. <laughs> it's true. It was hot. It was a bit busy. <laughs> My mom is not exempt from this song. My mom, as I mentioned, was a nurse. She was a very good nurse as well. She knew how to get into the med cart then, and she knows how to get into the med cart now. <laughs> they have to really be careful about locking that narcotics drawer in the mom. I don't blame her. Um, probably my favorite, my favorite thing that I've heard and witnessed in these eight years, uh, it was a lady named Geneva. She had no family. Uh, the staff and the residents were her family. And uh, so everybody kind of made a point of, of saying hello to Geneva. She had Alzheimer's as well. You, you weren't quite sure if it was registering, but you said hello anyway. 
She would often come back to you, though, with some remark that would make you wonder which one of you should have been there. And um, I said to Geneva one day, hello, Geneva. I leaned down into her face so she could see me through the glasses. I said, how are you today? She looked up at me very bird-like in her chair through her glasses, and she said, only God can save us now. <laughs>